Hi, welcome back. This is Battery Management Design Part 4. So the last video you saw, I had one of these Murata DC to DC converters running into a voltage regulator, then a microchip analog to digital converter 12-bit. Since then, as I've mentioned in the previous videos, I now have an I2C digital isolator. I've changed the regulator. This is 250 milliamp and it goes into current limit if you draw too much current. But on this particular side, I have the microchip 4096 voltage reference. Now that's only capable of delivering two milliamps. So you have to change the 2K pull-ups up to 10K. That's about 800 microamps at four volts. I've also improved the filtering. I put a couple of capacitors on the input and output of this DC to DC converter. I've moved it away from the sensitive ADC, which has improved it. Done the same over here. This side over here hasn't got the microchip voltage reference at the moment, but it has got the I2C digital isolator. You will have heard with my whinging, microchips ADC, or that quotes eight addresses, it's only one available in any one standard package unless you go to the factory. However, after searching for hours, they are all like that, 99% of them unless you change to SPI and then you can use a chip select to select different ADCs. There's also other methods of communication. I accidentally knocked this power supply the other day but fortunately I knocked it down. These Murata DC to DC converters will work up to 7 volts maximum. I've now got two running off a 5 volt regulator just so I don't blow them up. I'll show you the schematics and the part numbers. So DC to DC converter into a 5 volt voltage regulator, plenty of filtering. 5 volts goes into the SOT 234096 voltage reference, precision voltage reference, 1%, but there are better for similar cost. Into the 12 bit ADC, which is this SOT 235, and then this I2C digital isolator totally isolates the ground from the cell and the ground from the microcontroller. So you need pull-ups on this side of the I2C isolator and pull-ups on your microcontroller. To resolve the address bus conflict I have this 8 channel multiplexer. Now if you're not familiar with multiplexers you can mix loads of different signals or you can just pick one out of many, mix them, subtract them, this one is just a simple eight-way gate. So each of the I2C data lines run into this selector. I'm only selecting two at the moment. The switch is selected by three lines running to the microcontroller, which are here. So I can select eight different addresses, eight different switches, and eight different data lines. The clocks are all joined together. And this is the result moving the DC to DC converters away from the analog converters, twisting the power supply cables and adding additional filtering. Now this is still running in a loop in a while one, however it's only counting up to 50 it selects one channel, when it gets over 50 it selects the other channel here and when it's reading that channel multiple times, well 50 times, the cell goes red, C for cell. So now it's looking at that one. This wasn't moving earlier. Oh, there we go. This number wasn't moving earlier, so obviously the voltage is dropping. I'll put a meter on it in a minute. Now it's looking at this second cell. Incidentally, this is the top cell up at near 13, 14 volts, and this is the bottom cell. I recently charged this, so that's why the voltage is falling. But so now I'm even more impressed with the 12 bit ADCs from Microchip. They're not expensive and they are accurate to within one millivolt. So 
as you can see so this cell I haven't been charging or discharging it's been rock steady like that for, for well for a week actually let me get my meter and we'll compare the results I put this display on some kitchen roll bring it in line with this meter so cell 1 is this right hand cell and cell 2 is the original first left hand cell ground at the back this is cell 2 3.339 I'll leave it on there and we've got cell 2 here let's wait for it to start measuring when it goes red here we are 3.338 so it's accurate to 1 millivolt and it's still going off that large voltage reference Well, so now let me check cell 1 well there we go this is cell 1 that's recently been charged up so the voltage may be falling this this circuit has the precision voltage reference however it's it's off by 2 millivolts so I've changed the C file to accommodate that so 3.645 3.646 and it's measuring it now look C1 so again it's accurate to within one millivolt back on cell 1 3.646 3.645 earlier when the voltage was up ever so slightly they're actually spot on. Oh, you could that just flicked. You could see 3.645, it just dropped. If you rewind it, you can see that. And again, the other cell. I haven't swapped the leads over. So 3.339, 3.338. So I'm super impressed with the analog to digital converter 12-bit. I'm guessing this meter is a 12-bit ADC as well. Or do they use a 16-bit and only show 12-bit accuracy? There's a question for you. Let me show you the schematics. Right, here's my schematic. But for the newbies, in case you're totally unfamiliar with an isolated power supply, this is a basic example of that Murata power supply. 5 volts in. 5 volts out, we've got 5 volts and 0 volts. It's not called ground because it's not grounded, it's just a floating 0 volts. So that means you can come along, stick it on the 12 volt battery. If the negative terminal of this battery is grounded, we'll have 0 volts here and 5 volts here. You could still take the same DC to DC converter, connect the ground or even the live to the positive pin. But in this case it's a 0 volts and all it does is it pushes the 5 volts up so we still have 0 volts and 5 volts but with respect to ground we've got 17 between ground and the 5 volt pin but we still have 0 volts and 5 volts here that's what you can do when you isolate stuff and you can take the 5 volts connect that to the ground and it would, sh it would push the 0 volts down so you'd have minus 5 with respect to this terminal. So that's the beauty of isolated supplies. You can do anything with the output. Here's my schematic for this current project as it stands now. So the Murata isolated DC to DC converter, there's the RS part number, Murata's part number there. That goes into a 5 volt regulator. I've chosen this 5 volt regulator, that's the RS part number. So we get 5 volts out. That goes into the precision reference chip. There's microchips part number, RS part number. We get 4.096 volts out, plus or minus 1%. There are better ones available. This part here can deliver 2 milliamps. That goes into the 12-bit analog to digital converter. That's the RS part number. That's a microchip part number. As I said the other day, if you want one of these on a microcontroller, they are fantastic little devices. 
However, I wasn't happy about the bus conflict, with them all having the same address, but I'll come to that in a minute. Since this ADC is running off this voltage reference, 2 milliamps, you have to change the pull-ups to 10k. And 10k is OK for 100 kilohertz communication on the I2C data and clock lines. So quick word on this bus conflict, it transpires 99% of all ADCs are the same. They only have one address. If you want different addresses, you have to contact the factory. So because I've not had to use an external ADC, if not all, most of microchips microcontrollers have internal ADCs and they've always suited my needs. So you can get ADCs, lots of communications, but another one's SPI, so you could use a chip select to select each one, but then you need an extra chip select pin per device. A little note there, there are thousands of ADCs to choose from. You can have parallel communication, I2C, SPI, one wire. Anyway, that's enough about the ADC. It's a brilliant device and I thoroughly recommend it for its cost. So the communication lines, 10K pull-ups, data in green, I2C clock in yellow. They come into this device. You see it says isolation in the middle. So like the power supply top left, this side totally isolated from this side. So you can do whatever you want with the power and ground this side doesn't affect the power and ground and data this side. It's low power bi-directional I2C isolator. There's the part numbers for this package I'm using. ISO 1540 and ISO 1541. This is the stock number, RS stock number for my device. So this 5 volts runs from this regulator, not from the 4096. You see a little red line coming around the outside. So 5 volts ground, data, clock, bi-directional control on data and clock, and the same here. So the data runs into this device, Nexperia 748C4051D. Now this particular device is actually a 5 volt device. I didn't have any 3.3 volts. It's an 8 channel, so 8 inputs here, 8 channel multiplexer, demultiplexer, single 8 to 1, 5 volt, 16 pin, small outline IC, and that's the RS part number. So I can take any one of 8 data inputs, connect them to my output, which is this Z terminal. So there's I2C data straight into PIC microcontroller. So the clock from the first cell runs to the micro, clock from the second, clock from the third. The data lines would go to the different inputs, and I can choose up to 8 which means I could have eight ADCs using this one single multiplexer. So to select the one of eight different inputs, you need three wires. That gives you eight combinations. And there's S2, S1, and S0. You just send a one or a zero, depending on which one you want to select. I've shown one complete circuit for one cell. Another method, if you haven't got this multiplexer chip, and I haven't got one, you can use this. It's a Texas Instruments TCA9544A. One I2C master, and it has an address that you can set here. And via I2C communication, you tell it internally which I2C, one of four, you want to communicate with. So this would resolve that one address conflict. So either use this Nexperia similar device or this clever little device. Obviously on this ADC it said eight addresses available. There are only five pins so I knew I wasn't going to have this sort of thing where I connect the external lines to positive or negative to set the address. I figured I would communicate with it via I2C and tell it what address I want it to be. So A, that's why I was shocked it was only eight addresses, and B, I was then more shocked to learn it's got no writable registers, this one. No writable registers, you have to get them from the factory. But you live and learn. I've never had to use an external ADC before, and now I know, and they're all like it. So I've got a note here, simply tell the Texas Instruments TCA 9544A 
low voltage four channel i2c sm bus multiplexer with logic interrupt which channel you would like to use zero one two or three four possible devices on one i2c bus my multiplexer i can evade i do like this setup and i'll probably order a breakout board so before i go there's one important note i must mention with this i2c isolator this is the iso 1540 bi-directional data and clock you can see here you can see here these op amp symbols go face both directions my device iso 1541 data the bi-directional but the clock notice it isn't bi-directional there are none of these left in the world or at least i, th I think i tried them all so there's mouser digikey farnell uh, and rs components no one had any however rs components had this device and i know and i've done a tutorial on itc the pick microcontroller controls the clock so i don't need the slave to control the clock the slave doesn't control the clock the pick does the slave can't do anything with it however there are clever devices the data sheet for this goes into details like you can have a slave that can stretch the clock if it needs longer or shorter time so, so if you've got a clever slave you can't use this device you'd have to use a bi-directional notice the side one and side two this device i'm pretty sure it doesn't matter but this device it does matter side one must be the master and side two is the slave that's hopefully that's a little tip in case you're not familiar so that's how far i've got at the moment reading two cells using that schematic i've just shown you what's important is the filtering for each device and the proximity of the dc to dc converter to the adc get the filtering right get the spacing right you end up with rock steady results so as i say this first one's dropping because i charged it earlier but so i'm super impressed it's going to take me a while to finish the other two circuits because I blew up one of the ADCs. Don't ask me how, because I don't know. Once I've got some breakout boards, some more parts, I'll build up the other two circuits, join them all together, and see where we go from there. Hopefully this has been interesting. If you have comment, leave it below. I'll put the C file on GitHub as before, and leave a link in the show more. If you want to donate a coffee for my C file, the link is also in the show more. Or donate a coffee for the schematic I've just shown you. Thanks for watching.